Hey buckaroos and buckarettes, it's good to be back with you. Today I'd like to explain how to calculate the minimum flying speed of an airplane. Well, if we're gonna talk about airplanes, it helps to have one, so here's mine. This is a little radio control plane I've got. It's actually parts of two planes. I bought one, crashed it, bought another one, crashed it, and then I put this together out of the parts. This one's flying fine. But the reason we're talking about it here is I want you to see the wing and the tail, but the wing, and when you make a when you're flying a plane, the lift from the wing up counteracts the weight down. And there's also a propeller back here. There's some thrust as well, but we're not concerned with that today. The wing has something called a lift coefficient. It's a non-dimensional number, no units, that describes how much lift the wing can produce due to its shape. Um, as the, the angle of attack, the angle of the plane makes with the air coming in goes up and up, the lift goes up and up, to, uh, up until there's a maximum. Eventually, the, and this angle gets so high that the air can't go over the wing anymore, and it stalls. What happens is the air separates from the top of the wing, and the lift coefficient goes down, sometimes by quite a lot. Well, that peak there, the maximum angle, that's, the, that's called CL max. That's the maximum lift coefficient the wing can generate. So anything that flies with wings has a maximum lift coefficient. This plane does too. I'm not sure what it is, but it has one. So let me put this down and let's crunch some numbers. So first thing we need to know is a governing equation. Well, the governing equation is that the lift produced by a plane is the lift coefficient CL times one half rho V squared S. Now let's make sure we know what all these things mean. Okay, lift, that's the force up, and that has to counteract the weight down. So when you're uh, looking at the minimum flying speed, the, the lift has to equal the weight. So we're gonna put that there. Okay, one half, well that's just a number. Rho is the density of air. Now air may weigh more than you think. The density of air for an ISO standard atmosphere at sea level, 20 degrees C or whatever it is, is 1.23 kilograms per cubic meter. We're gonna call it 1.2, that's close enough for what we need. And also if you're a little bit above sea level where I am right now, 1.2 is good enough, or six over five. Well, velocity squared, so velocity, that's what we're gonna solve for here in a second. And S is the wing area. Now the wing area is as viewed from the top, so, if you want to know what the wing area of this little plane is, you look at it that way. So that's the area uh, that you can see from the top, okay, top view, plan form view is what they call this. All right. So let's run some numbers here real quick. Let's take a very small kind of a, a single seat airplane, a little sport plane maybe, maybe the, the kind a home builder would make. And so let's look at a mass of 300 kilograms which is 661 pounds. We're definitely doing this in uh, metric units. Mass of 300 kilograms. This is a pretty small plane, but there, there's plenty out there like that. I'm looking forward to building one someday. Uh, we're gonna need the acceleration of gravity. That's 9.81. As you see me looking down, I'm actually looking at my monitor down there that has all this stuff on it for us. Okay, what else do we need? Rho, all right. We're gonna call that six over five kilograms per cubic meter, 1.2 kilograms per cubic meter, which is a lot. You know, air weighs more maybe than you thought it did. Um, we're gonna need an area, and that's area of both wings, and so I'm gonna call that 14 square meters, which is about right. I, I, this is based on a couple of little airplanes I've, I've looked at. And the last thing we need is CL max. Well, it depends on the configuration of the wing. But a CL max of about 1.5, that's about as high as you could reasonably get. Now you can make some modifications to the wing by adding leading edge, they're called slats, these extra uh, lifting surfaces at the leading edge or flaps at the trailing edge. You can do some things like that to increase this. But for a simple wing like the one on my plane over there, that's about as high as you can reasonably get. So there's all the numbers we need. Now because I put them here, I'm gonna erase them. I'm gonna write this out in terms of velocity and then we're gonna solve. So let me, there you go, you can take a screenshot or whatever you want there. So let's do just a little bit of algebra here. We're gonna solve for velocity. So velocity is two times the weight over CL max. Now we wanna see the maximum lift coefficient. 
um, times rho s, and because velocity was squared there, we need a square root. So let's just put the numbers in here. Now, we need two times, now weight is the mass times the acceleration of gravity. So that's 300 kilograms times 9.81 meters per second squared. And that is 2,943 newtons if you're, if you're following along at home. So coefficient of lift of 1.5. Remember, lift coefficient is non-dimensional. There's no units associated with this. So we're good there. Rho, okay, so I'm going to say 1.2 kilograms. I can do better. Kilograms per cubic meter times 14 meters squared. Take the square root of all that. Okay, this is just this is this isn't even algebra anymore. This is just arithmetic, and you get 15. Oops. Once again, I can do better. 15.283, I think. Yep. Meters per second. And of course, the units all work out here. Kilograms cancel out. Let's see, meters. That cancels out, that cancels out. Uh, yeah, we're gonna get meters per sec, meters squared per second squared is how this is gonna work out. So it'll be meters squared per second squared, and then you take the square root to get meters per second. So let me finish this here. There's that, there's that, and uh, I only get to cancel out meters once there. Sorry about that. So the meters there is gonna, going to, because this is a, a, the denominator of a denominator, it's gonna multiply through there. This is gonna be meters squared per second squared. So the units do work out. Now if you want this in goofy English units, this is gonna be 34 point, what is it, one nine pretty much, miles per hour. And I'm sorry, I do think in those units. You know, not pretty, but there it is. So anyway, this is a real simple calculation. It's based pretty much on uh, the area of the wing and its uh, maximum lift coefficient. Pretty simple, hope this helps, and we'll talk to you next time.